Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And before we get started on tonight's story, I'm going to let you know about HelloFresh, tonight's sponsor, and tonight's sponsor of the 13-Day Halloween Countdown. Have a packed schedule this fall? Well, HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30-plus recipes and 70-plus convenience items all delivered to your door. HelloFresh works with your schedule. Plans are flexible, and you can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. HelloFresh streamlined supply chain reduces greenhouse gas emissions compared to grocery shopping, according to the University of Michigan study. And plus, in partner with a plastic bank, HelloFresh prevents 10 million bottles from entering the ocean every year. They were kind enough to send me this pork bulgogi, which you're going to see me attempt to make. I am not binging with Babish, so <laughs> you have to forgive my horrible cooking etiquette because I'm used to just cooking stuff for my family. I will say that HelloFresh does make this a lot easier on me because all the ingredients are included. Everything is completely shown in the instructions, and it makes it very easy to make a good meal uh, with fresh ingredients. So if you like what you see, and you're getting hungry watching it, go over to HelloFresh.com and use code CREEPYPASTA65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and code CREEPYPASTA65, like you see on your screen. Don't miss out on the great offer, folks. Meals like this don't just fall out of the sky. And now, on to tonight's story. I'll start from the beginning. This might be a little rambly. I need to organize my thoughts. I went on a date a few weeks back with a woman. I'll call her Anna. We were talking about um, conspiracies. Stalkers, these famous criminals, astrology, witch witchcraft, you know, typical date stuff. Then she she asked me, have you had dreams with a red door in it? Something I should put out there, right? I don't believe in the supernatural. The world is just a boring place. You know, we're just meat that thinks. It's been nothing but trouble ever since. That said, I enjoy the paranormal. I enjoy ghosts, aliens, you know, all that shit. And maybe it's because I don't have a visual imagination. I've never experienced anything that couldn't be explained outside of dreams. I don't dream every time I sleep. And it's even rarer for me to remember, but about a year ago... I started noticing randomly in my dreams this this red door. I stopped eating my fries and I asked, a bright red door? So so red it, it almost glows. In mine, it's metal, but yeah. That color for sure. I don't I don't remember most of the conversation exactly. The gist of it was that she's been seeing this door in her dreams since she was a kid, and she only knows three other people who have had that experience. Neither of us have interacted with it, as far as we know. I didn't know if I believed her at that point. But I was definitely curious now. A couple days after that date, I had a dream. Normally the door is just a distracting background element. I don't even notice till I wake up. But this time my dream went from a third-person flyover, a grocery store, smash cut, to a first-person view of the door, almost like it was a shot from a horror movie. I remember there I was just standing in front of it, and then I woke up. I texted Anna about my dream, and she said she was jealous. She asked if I touched the door. I, I said, hell no. Why not, Mr. Science? Scared of a dream? Anna teased. And at the time, I agreed. It was weird for me to be scared. It's doctor science, thank you, I said. I see that stupid smug grin through your texts, Anna said. But seriously, why not? Look, I just want my four and a half hours of sleep in peace, no adventure. So there was a prompt on my dating profile. I mentioned something about lucid dreaming, I think. It's the thing that Anna brought up when she matched with me, so I wasn't fully surprised when she said, Why don't I just come over to your place tonight and you show me how to lucid dream? So, I mean... Obviously, I said yes. <laughs> that night, I explained to her how I lucid dream. And really, there's, there's only three rules. First, you want to put something in the dream that you immediately recognize it's a dream. It could be anything. As long as it stands out enough to remind you that you're dreaming. It's not 100% necessary, but it does get you in control sooner. And second, you always want to be aware of where your consciousness is. You can drift out of your body if you're not careful, and it's back to normal dreaming. 
And finally, most importantly, you need to monitor your emotions. So if you, if you lose control of your emotions, you lose control of the dream. First thing I remember about this dream was the location. At first I thought that we were at a university, some sort of college campus, but the, the architecture was off. Everything was both old and new, like gothic cathedrals built by Apple, flying buttresses and steeples of glass and pearl white plastic. The first person I saw was Anna. And since I didn't find any copies of pets for the Nintendo DS around, I think I made her my anchor by accident. I wondered, maybe she did the same. I never dreamed with someone else before. The way she smiled, played with her hair out of boredom, it was... It was, it was hard to remember this was just a dream. Right, um, back to the dream. Uh, we looked around for a while, no other people, no dream monsters, all... Doors were solidly monochromatic. I think this was when I brought up how this is from me playing too much Bloodborne, and then explaining what Bloodborne was to Dream Anna in excruciating detail. But then Anna said, But that doesn't make sense. This is my dream. Before I could argue, there it is. In the middle of a promenade flanked by white arches in front of a white sandy beach with a blue ocean that stretched across the horizon. I remember just standing there. Those moments felt way different than the rest of the dream. I was physically present in my own body in a way that I'd never felt while asleep. Yeah, there it is. And it looked at me, almost expecting me to say something. Was it actually her? I walked closer, hearing the sound of my steps as they moved from pavement to clay tile of the promenade. I reached out and touched the door. It's warm. Solid. I think this is good enough. You go ahead and touch it in your own dream. As I looked back at Anna, she was right behind me, turning the handle of the door. Oh shit! The door yields open as Anna twists the handle. I jump back on instinct. I felt my heart racing even though I'm in my dream. Anna! I yelled out. A light engulfs her then. I'm at the start of my dream, but now there are people walking from building to building. The only thing... Whenever I look toward a person, they immediately mirror my gaze. Everyone. And with that same horrified expression. I close my eyes. I'm losing it. I'm losing control. And then... Wake up! And his voice brought me back. I was awake. I looked over at the clock. 5 a.m. We compared dreams as I brewed some coffee. She occupied my cat's attention. Her dream started at a construction site near her old high school, but once we reached the promenade, things were weirdly similar. Anna thought otherwise. I told you, I have... She waved her arms around erratically. Gifts. Yeah, doubt that. I remember thinking if Anna dreamt that Bloodborne conversation or something similarly nerdy, then I would be more willing to coincide, but honestly, it wasn't worth bringing up. Besides, in her dream, I was weirdly more serious and stoic. What about this? Anna turned around and grabbed something from my shelf. You wouldn't shut up about this video game. She turned around with a PS4 game in her hand. A man with a hacksaw and a gothic city that reached up to the sky. Shit. I don't have a funny quip. And the moment she saw it on my face... She had the widest smile. She got me. Whatever. Did you open the door, though? I asked before taking a sip of coffee. Anna looked away from me before speaking. Yeah, I think I woke up as soon as it opened. I noticed something was on her mind, something she didn't want to say. Did you see what was inside? I think... I think I should go home. I'll text you later. We didn't talk about dreams for the next week or so. I hadn't had any I remembered since then. It wasn't until our next date that Anna brought it up. Do you ever see things? Anna asked in a hushed tone. We were at a boba shop in the arts district, downtown. 
Strange conversations happen here all the time, so I knew something was up. Not really, I said. I told her I have aphantasia, zero visual imagination. The only time I see things that aren't real is in my dreams. Why do you ask? I see it when I'm awake. See what? The door. So I don't know if I made the right call, but I invited her to stay at my place for a while. I knew Anna had been through some shit. You know, she, she's had her own mental issues with not that great a support system in the city. Not that it mattered. This woman was basically the complete package. Weird, smart, hot. Everything you could ask for, but also... Also, I felt responsible for this mess in the first place. I realized immediately Anna wasn't sleeping. At least, not deeply. She'd get up all through the night. The third night, we had a conversation, and finally... Finally... She told me what she saw in that dream three weeks ago. I was in your room. It's not that I woke up. I opened the door, and I was... I was in your room. I took a pause to search how I should react. Well, I, I guess on a technical level, that's pretty unnerving, but I wasn't alone. I felt... I feel someone watching me. It was then that we made a plan. We were going to go in again, and this time we'd enter the door together. As we were getting ready to sleep, I... I held her hand and I looked into her eyes. Best case scenario, a night of real sleep might help. Worst case scenario, whatever happens, we'll handle it together. Promise. This dream was a little different. It took a while to become aware. I made Anna my anchor this time intentionally, but the first part of the dream I don't remember. But when I saw Anna sitting at a bus stop, tapping her feet, twirling her hair, I knew I was in the right place. Did I keep you waiting long? I asked. Oh, so you believe that I'm real now? Anna asked. I looked around. There was a great ocean view. White buildings, blue roofs. We were in Santorini, Greece. I don't know. Maybe. This is definitely too normal for one of my dreams. We started off looking for the door, but as time passed, we just decided to go sightseeing. The weather was nice. There was a festival going on, but it wasn't too crowded. We spent all day talking and walking around the city. I almost forgot this was a dream. There it is! Anna squeezed my arm like a vice, and suddenly, that feeling again. Hyper-presence. I wondered if our dreams were in sync again. Part of me hoped that we did share the whole experience somehow. Right, I can't be getting distracted in my own dream. We made our way to the door, together reaching for the handle when a familiar voice calls my name. Wouldn't do that, kid. You don't know how deep this thing goes. I freeze. Was that... my dad? Anna looks at me unsure. I turn to look, standing about 9 or 12 feet away. I 100% recognize that man as my father. From the bald head to the leather sandals, but it's... It's too correct. He smiles a little too wide. Who are you? I grab Anna a little tighter. A friend. The man says. We need to talk. Just us. I take a second. Looking at the man in the shape of my father, the ominous red door, and Anna. Go. Go! I twist the knob and we both fall through into a bright, waking light and... Just like Anna said, I... I stumbled into the room I fell asleep in. Alone. The next 24 hours I spent all day calling, texting, trying to figure out... Look, trust me, I'm not crazy, okay? I didn't make up a girlfriend for a story, but... I checked her belongings, no ID, her car, no, no registration, but her things are here. They're still here. It's been two months. I've exhausted all my other leads, no social media, no missing persons. I haven't told anyone until now, I don't know what to believe, but everything that happened, happened. The only thing left is that door. The red door. I... 
I haven't been able to dream at all since then, but there's at least three other people out there who can. Listen closely. Do any of you remember a dream with a red door? Hey guys, I just want to make sure that all of you take a look in the description down below for multiple different reasons. The main reason I'm talking about right now, though, is to look at the author's links. Every time that I do a story on one of these platforms, I post links from the authors. Some of them are books that the authors put out. If you like the stories that you hear, then I highly, highly encourage you to go scroll down, take a look in the description, click one of those links. If you like that author, I guarantee you they have something else that you're going to like. And if they have a book out there, you're going to love that book. I mean, hell, that's how Tales from the Gas Station became what it is, okay? If you guys heard it on YouTube, then hey, there are more, bigger, better versions of it out there that you can get on Amazon or Audible or No Sleep or what have you. So for real, uh, the, scroll down, check out the links. And that's not like an advertisement thing. I'm just like, look, you're, this is for your benefit. Check it out. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Thank you so much. A very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Reaper61167, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Vicky McQuicky, Santa High, Crusader Chocobo, Spooky Shell, Adam Morris, Grand Moth the Milky, Big Smoke 369, Captain Scurvy, Salty Irish Poet, Esteban, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Horror Fan 1212, Hour Minute Second Time, Kyle Resnack, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Robert Malcolm, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochy Boochie, Seclude, Lupita Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Merxidum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Catabaker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Like Sharp Things, Violinian, Xavier Graphius, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tramagasy, Maria Walker, Emily Mitchell, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limcha, Dirt Diver o Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Hidden Tiger, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Psychomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Sazaku, Cronut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Welverick, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, thank you guys so, so much because you guys help me do everything that I do here. You guys help pay authors for stories and commission stories and do everything that I can do to make this channel and make this podcast the best it could possibly be. So thank you all for supporting me here. And as always, everyone, sweet dreams.